Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Colin Sodongo. Uh, I work at MKU Parklands Law Campus, uh, that is at the School of Law of MKU. Uh, within the undergraduate curriculum, LLB, uh, we have Property Law 1, which is a unit taught at level 1, second semester. So and under Property Law, uh, we have matrimonial property rights as an important topic for us. Uh, bottom line, what we are saying is that Property Law 1, uh, Property Law generally, is a very important subject of law, and uh, Property Law 1 is a prerequisite to Property Law 2. So basically, property law is divided into two. That is one and two. And for today, our focus will be on property law one. Regarding matrimonial property rights, uh, the synopsis or the outline of this lesson will be introduction, matrimonial property rights in terms of definition. How are these rights enforced in Kenya? The legal provisions, what does the law provide on matrimonial property rights? Then what references can we get from case law? Uh, because we know that cases are a source of law in this country. Then a few references, and then we make the conclusion. So welcome to today's lesson. Uh, when we talk of property, uh, whether you are talking of Kenya as a legal system, or you're talking of the UK, the US, developed economies, uh, less developed economies, uh, properties of different types. You have land as property, you have motor vehicles as property, you have intellectual property, which is knowledge. You have copyright in music, for example, which is property. So thinking about property law, one needs to think beyond movable property or removable property. But we are saying land is the most important type of property. The legal framework on property talks about property not as something, but as a relationship. What kind of a relationship is this? It is a relationship between the owner of something and that thing. So therefore, law comes in to regulate that relationship as a relationship, strictly speaking. And by uh, theories of property, we mean how does someone come to acquire property? That is, how does someone relate to property? So whether you, have, you relate to property by way of occupation or ownership, those are basically theories of property. And today we focus on matrimonial property and rights as a form of property. Matrimonial property refers to property acquired or owned by spouses. The interest of law is both on matrimonial property and the matrimonial home. Uh, from a land law perspective, from a property law perspective, law is very much concerned with property, uh, matrimonial property, uh, the one that is acquired and jointly owned by spouses. So, when you come to matrimonial property, the Constitution of Kenya, which is the basic law of this country, and talking about the basic law, it is the supreme law of this country. The Constitution is the one that got the seal of the people and was promulgated after a referendum. So that the Constitution in the hierarchy of laws under the Judicature Act ranks above any other law. So talking about statutes, talking about custom, talking about Islamic law, talking about religious law, all these are inferior within the legal structure and they are inferior to the constitution. Now starting with Article 45 of the constitution, this article defines the family and it says that the family is the fundamental unit of society. By fundamental we mean that there is no society without family. We are because we are members of a biological family, a father, a mother, children, and other relatives. So a family can go both horizontal and vertical. Uh, talking about the equality provision, Article 45 of the Constitution is very clear beyond paradventure by saying that parties to a marriage are equal at the time of the marriage, during the marriage, and upon dissolution of the marriage. And uh, this therefore means that uh, the equality is a legal type of equality to mean that they have de jure equality. From the eyes of the law, the parties are equal before the law. That therefore proceeds to determine their rights to property and their, their rights to that marriage. So marriage being foundational through the family, the constitution, which is the grand norm, the supreme law of the land, 
uh, focuses on matrimonial property rights within marriage. The rights that accrue to, mar uh, to parties in a marriage, that is man and wife, rank very high in the eyes of law. And the point we are making is that as opposed to the common law of England, uh, where it developed that a woman was inferior to a man uh, in terms of uh, legally speaking, uh, of course, we know biologically women are more superior because they're the ones who are procreators uh, giving uh, us children that will continue, uh, will continue the, the family. But in eyes of law at common law, there was a strange position where the woman was regarded as legally inferior to the man. And a woman could only acquire and own property under the coverture of a man. In other words, no woman could stand as a firm soul in her own legal right. But the constitution of Kenya is more advanced and has moved a step ahead to say that a woman ranks equally to a man in the eyes of law. In other words, a, a woman stands alone in her own legal right. However, when property is acquired during marriage, there is a presumption that, that is raised by law. However, that presumption can be rebutted by way of evidence for example, evidence of contribution. Uh, before the 2010 constitution, uh, that is a constitution that we have had for now close to uh, about 10 years, uh, it's basically a decade old. Uh, the Court of Appeal, which was then the highest court in the land before the Supreme Court ushered in uh, by the 2010 constitution, emphasized proof of contribution and the emphasis of the Court of Appeal then was monetary contribution. In other words, non-monetary contribution did not count to ownership of property. So therefore, over the years, a mother, a woman would cultivate land. Over the years, a mother would take care of children. Over the years, a mother would clean up property, for example, homes and houses, etc. But this would not count towards uh, a share in the matrimonial property. But the 2010 constitution, which is our operative constitution currently, having been amended historically many times, of course more than 40, the independence constitution having been amended more than 40 times over time, the current constitution now talks about equality of parties before the law. In other words, uh, where a question arises as to the share of a wife, in matrimonial property or in property acquired during marriage, then the constitution and the a court of law in Kenya would not adopt a separation of ownership approach, but would adopt a community of ownership approach. What does this mean? That the parties do not uh, cannot uh, basically define their respective shares in the in the property, but the the law would presume joint ownership. Uh, and joint ownership is very close to common ownership because here you are talking about a property that is acquired during marriage and is being owned by both spouses by virtue of the marriage, not by virtue of contribution, monetary or non-monetary. So in this case, uh, uh, personally, as a proponent and supporter of gender law and, gender, and, and rights of women in society, I support the community of ownership approach as opposed to the separation of ownership approach an approach that was found at common law, but the current approach, which is more valid and makes more sense, is the community of ownership approach. Uh, going to the legal provisions, talking about matrimonial property rights in Kenya, the first glance uh, after the constitution is the Matrimonial Property Act, which again is a law that came after the constitution of Kenya 2010. And uh, putting a stop or a break at section 6 of uh, the Act. The Act defines matrimonial property very broadly. And it says that any property that is acquired by spouses in a marriage, during the marriage, it becomes part of matrimonial property. And then the land being the main form of property in Kenya, uh, we cannot look at the Matrimonial Property Act in exception, we have to look at the Matrimonial Property Act and also look at what land law or the Land Act says about uh, property in land. And here what we mean is that Section 2 
of that statute singles out the matrimonial home as part of matrimonial property. Remember, this matrimonial home is that home which is occupied by a family as members of a family. In other words, whether that property is in the name of the father, that property is in the name of the mother, or that property is in the name of neither of them, but it is owned and or occupied by the spouses, with or without children, then it qualifies to be the matrimonial home. So therefore, you harmonize uh, Section 6 MPA, Matrimonial Property Act, Section 2 Land Act or Land Registration Act, then you come up with one conclusion, which is that the matrimonial home is part of matrimonial property. The inevitable finding therefore becomes that matrimonial home is jointly owned by both spouses, whether occupied by them or not, uh, whether uh, uh, they have children or not, uh, you know, that becomes part of the matrimonial property. The anchor of the Matrimonial Property Act and the Land Act and the Land Registration Act is the Constitution, because we are, we are saying whether we are relying on the Kelsenian Grand Norm or we are relying on the supreme doctrine of supremacy of the Constitution, which is uh, anchored in our Constitution, is Article 45. And what did we say Article 5 is about? Equality of parties to a marriage. In other words, when people join into matrimony in the eyes of the law, they are equal. At the time of marriage, during the marriage, and upon dissolution of that marriage, that is at the end of that marriage. There is another interesting provision that we must also take into account, which is uh, Section 93 of the Land Registration Act. And a sentence or two on this statute is that uh, the Land Registration Act is a statute that is used for transferring property rights from one person to another. Remember, you and I, when we own land or property, can transfer property to other persons, that is third parties. But the law is very keen on the property relationships of people or persons in a marriage. And Article or Section 93 of that statute, the Land Registration Act, raises a presumption of joint ownership of property acquired during marriage, especially if this property is land. So in layman's terms, or layman's terms, what do we mean under Section 93? We mean that even if one party acquired property and wrote that property in their own name, as long as that person is married, Section 93 says that, look, that property is owned jointly. And a court of law will deal with it as such. The institution of the family, therefore, and the institution of marriage are jointly important to the law. And why, why am I saying this? Starting all the way from Article 45 of the Constitution, equality of parties to marriage, running down to Section 2 of the Land Act, Land Registration Act, the matrimonial home is part of matrimonial property, going to Section 6, Matrimonial Property Act, Matrimonial property is defined, and the matrimonial home is part of it. Uh, fast tracking to Section 93, Land Registration Act, that section raises a presumption of joint ownership of property acquired during the marriage. So therefore, the family, marriage, and acquisition or ownership of property within that context of family is very important to law. Uh, when we look at some case references or case law, Remember, uh, the Kenyan law, in particular the Judicature Act, allows us to draw from the common law of England, that is the substance of the common law of England. We are also allowed to draw from the substance of equity. And common law of England, substance of equity, must be in conformity with our written law. In other words, the constitution ranks uh, as a first law up there, followed by statutes. And these statutes include statutes of general application. After those statutes, then we have case law. Cases in an adversarial legal system are products of disputes between parties. And this therefore means that the court of law, especially uh, following the realist school, the legal realism, courts of law have the authority, judicial authority, 
Article 159 of the Constitution. They have the judicial authority to pronounce law. So, for example, uh, some English cases on this. Uh, when someone looks at uh, Petit v. Petit, and here is a case, for example, dealing with alimony. Uh, can a husband be compelled to provide maintenance for a separated wife? And the answer becomes yes, because the husband has a source of income, even during the pendency of a case. Another case that we can look at is uh, Gissing versus Gissing. And this case is authority to the point that uh, matrimonial property rights can be determined within marriage. Other cases that may not appear in my slide are, for example, uh, Tabitha Wangeshi, which was a case that was dealt with uh, by the defunct uh, Court of Appeal, the, the former Court of Appeal, before the Supreme Court came in. And uh, the Court of Appeal then of Kenya, weighing between the separation of ownership approach versus community of ownership approach, went for separation of ownership approach. And what the Court of Appeal then was saying in that uh, landmark case then was that parties have to prove contribution. But as we have seen, in the context of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 and emergent laws, that is the subsequent laws, uh, a party can only rely upon the proof of marriage or proof of membership in a family as the ladder or as the stepping stone to their matrimonial property rights. Then closer home, if someone looks at Isa v. Isa, uh, the point in this case is that the Kenyan courts have declared matrimonial property rights important to parties to a marriage. And what this therefore means is that the court of law can proceed to determine what belongs to this party, what belongs to the other party, vis-a-vis -vis their rights in the marriage. So this is not about custody of children, neither is it about uh, guardianship of children, neither is it about providing habitation for one party, but it is about determining what is my share in this property vis-a-vis -vis you. The legal protection of matrimonial property rights therefore becomes very important to the stability and the continuation of marriage and the family. And basically, the points we have uh, covered in this class or in this lesson is basically the point that the law frowns upon dissolution of marriages. And in addition to that, the law frowns upon separation of parties from marriage. But should it come, the law will not be timid and a court of law will not be afraid to determine the rights of parties to that marriage, especially as regards uh, matrimonial property. In other words, uh, Kenya being an advanced, an advancing legal system has moved beyond, has moved beyond uh, the community of ownership approach, which was prevalent then, to uh, has moved beyond separation of ownership approach, which was prevalent then, to community of ownership approach. And this therefore flows from the basic point in the Constitution. Remember uh, when authors like uh, Frederick Engels uh, talk about the origin of the family. The family has come from far. Uh, from the creation account in the Bible, where God created man and woman to advanced families in terms of uh, can you have uh, a, a family which is defined by mother and children or can you have a family defined by father and children. However, the starting point becomes Hyde versus Hyde, which, uh, in, uh, which is an authority to the point that the marriage which, which is recognized by law becomes that between a man and a woman. So it is that voluntary union where people consent to it. Now, uh, when you come to the legal aspect of that relationship, Article 45 of the Constitution is very clear that Kenya recognizes only heterosexual marriages. Uh, in other words, uh, the heterosexuality of a marriage and the family is, is defined by Article 45. Article 45.1 of the Constitution of Kenya begins by saying that parties to 
a heterosexual marriage or parties to a marriage can freely give consent to enter into that marriage. And having done so, then Article 45 proceeds to give sabbaticals 1, 2, 3, and the rest by specifying the rights of those parties. And one of those rights is the right to equality. Equality means non-discrimination on the basis of gender, on the basis of race, or any other, uh, you know, human factor. By talking about the common law of England, uh, it had the concept of coverture. In other words, a woman only got legal rights under the umbrella of a man. And which man was this? The man that married her. But the, the law of Kenya has moved beyond that by saying that a woman can cover herself with her own umbrella. This therefore means that as a legal right, uh, she can uh, have rights, you know, in her own capacity. And this includes the right to acquire and own property of any description within the Republic of Kenya as provided for under Article 40 of the Constitution. Because Article 40 of the Constitution talks about the, the right to property, which is a, a second generation right, or rather first generation right, because the right to property is almost equivalent or is second to the right to life. Talking about property acquired during marriage, it is common in traditional setups, for example, to find that a man, because of a, of a source of income or a higher source of income, uh, gets to buy property and then writes or registers that property in his own name. The law says that if this property be land or landed property, then there's a presumption of joint ownership. That presumption flows from equality of parties to a marriage in the Constitution, Article 45, sub Article 3, and Section 93 of the Land Registration Act, which paraphrased raises a presumption of joint ownership. So therefore, one can critique the common law position by saying that if it was a cake, it was rudimentary, because it said that women were like secondary citizens uh, when it comes to property ownership. But we know that, in fact, the de facto position is that that is not the case. Uh, talking about the former Court of Appeal, remember, as at the time that the Court of Appeal existed, before the 2010 Constitution, there was no law on matrimonial property rights. But thank God that when the 2010 Constitution came, in the basket of goodies in that Constitution, there came equality of parties to a marriage in the eyes of the law. And this therefore means that uh, the Court of Appeal, in the dilemma where it was, uh, for example, Tabitha Wangeshi case, that dilemma has so far been resolved by the Matrimonial Property Act, which is an enactment that though ranking below the Constitution in the order of hierarchy of laws or in the order of supremacy of laws, is still law, nevertheless. Uh, talking about the question of rights, and critics have, to some extent, criticized uh, the law on equality of parties. Critis critics have criticized the law on presumption of joint ownership of matrimonial property. But wait a minute. Marriage as an institution, whether biblical, legal, or viewed from whichever angle or social, is a, is a, a relationship of adults. And these are adults who, in the modern era, are working. And nobody works for non-monetary gain because there must be economic value of work. Having worked then, that work should be translated into economic value. What does the law do under Marx's theory is to transform that economic value into a legal right. And this therefore means that, um, that my sweat or the work of my hands or the work of my mind or the work of my brain, my intellectual property, can give rise to economic value. And this therefore means that if, therefore, I'm a spouse in a marriage, my rights have to be translated into the level of legal protection. And what does the law do? To clothe these rights with enforcement. And we have seen that happening in cases. Uh, looking at the array 
of laws that tackle matrimonial property. I have said, and it behoves me to repeat, that the Constitution of Kenya talks about equality of parties to a marriage. Well, that is not just a legal concept, but for those of us uh, who read the good book, it is also a biblical concept. But equality of parties cannot be there without it being both de jure, that is both in law and in fact, de facto. And the de jure equality of parties to a marriage, as we have seen, that is a substantive equality, the formal equality provided by the law is in the constitution. But an act of parliament which come in to fill in the void, the gaps, the vacuums left by the constitution have not left this issue into, uh, in limbo. Uh, you know, acts of parliament have talked about equality in ownership and determination of matrimonial property rights. And what this therefore means is that the Matrimonial Property Act combined with the Land Act and also combined with the, the Land Registration Act that deals with a transfer of rights from one person to another inter vivos during the lifetime of the parties provide for equality. It will do a lot of injustice not to mention transfer of property between spouses. And the question can arise can I sell property to my wife? The answer is yes. And that would be regarded as inter vivos transfer, as between ourselves. And uh, talking about the mechanics of uh, transfer of that property is that even stamp duty would not be payable on that transaction because of the high regard that the law gives the family as an institution and marriage as the originator of the family as another institution. So that the scheme of rights under Matrimonial Property Act, Land Act, Land Registration Act are all but rest. They rest on the foundation of Article 45 of the Constitution of Kenya. Talking about the Land Registration Act, the legal vehicle through which we transfer property rights from one person to another, including matrimonial property, Section 93, very interesting section because it's a section that comes pursuant to or following Article 45. And it says that whether there is contribution or not, whether there is productivity or not, whether there is monetary contribution or not, whether there is non-monetary contribution or not, there is a presumption of joint ownership. In other words, as long as I am in that marriage, I need not prove contribution. What I need to prove is that I'm in that marriage, and that is it. The law rests, rests its, its case. The family then and marriage therefore become important institutions. And drawing from Angel's historical background, Frederick Angel's, uh, the great German thinker, uh, drawing from uh, his thinking, origin of marriage origin of the family, origin of property, marriage, family, property, in very important to law. That's why the topic of matrimonial property rights is pretty critical. And it's a topic that one cannot do justice to within a short lesson like this. One therefore needs to move through the forest of sections of law and rest or anchor at the constitution in order to find middle ground, the approach that a court of law would determine. And what have we said? That approach is enforcement of Article 45, sub Article 3. That approach is honoring the presumption at Section 93. Of course, we said as any presumptions in law, especially the law of evidence, the presumption can be rebutted when evidence is proved to the contrary. For example, evidence negating a marriage, evidence negating a validity of marriage, etc. Talking about case law, it's a very interesting area because as you and I may know, the common law of England developed out of cases. And petit v. petit, gissing v. gissing, 
Isa v. Isa. Cases that probably were decided in a little bit of ancient times. Determination of alimony owed to or enti uh, being entitled to by a wife. Cases of determination of shares in matrimonial property. In addition to that, uh, National Bank, National Provincial Bank v. Ainsworth, the equity of a deserted wife and wife has been deserted in the matrimonial home, do they have equity? And can the mortgagee, that is the lender, come to exercise the statutory power of sale upon that right? And the court says, no, 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 you can't do that against Ainsworth. Uh, talking about Barclays Bank, PLC, Public Limited Company v. O'Brien, and it's a case that deals with, you know, the fraud of a husband. You know, the law of Kenya has really advanced. And we as citizens of this country, and we as servants of the law, must be alive to this fact. Even a charge created over the matrimonial home, the law is now clear that parties to a marriage must consent to it. In other words, be very careful uh, before you take up a charge on the security of the matrimonial home because the law requires the consent of the spouse to that charge. You cannot take a loan and secure it on the matrimonial home without the consent, without the written permission of the other party to that marriage. The legal framework, therefore, on the protection of matrimonial property rights is very rich and robust. This is the reason why we are saying that the Constitution of Kenya 2010 is a very progressive law. It is not, uh, it does not bear austerity of tabulated legalism. It is not cast in stone. It is not written without a spirit. The Constitution of Kenya being a living document, being a document that has life and is intended to breathe life into the life of Kenyans, is robust and has Article 45 that provides for equality of parties to a marriage. And we are saying in terms of the synopsis of this lesson that it is important for marriages to be grounded in the law and for matrimonial property rights to be provided for where applicable and where necessary. So to bring the lesson to an end, or to bring the lecture to an end, just a basic recap on what we talked about. We have basically talked about property law, and we have applied property law of Kenya to the ownership of matrimonial property, property within a marriage. We have said and made the point that property is of different types. However, when it comes to property owned within a marriage or in the context of a family, then the law takes a keen eye the law puts a spotlight on the legal rights of those parties to that marriage. The legal meaning of property, we have said it is viewed as a relationship. That's why when you truncate or when you cascade the marriage into a family, then you can end up with property, which again the law is very much concerned with. We have said many theories of property and many approaches to determination of property rights within a marriage. But we have said bottom line is that there, is, there must be substantive equality of the parties to a marriage. And that substan su substantive equality includes the right to own property. Where that property is acquired during marriage, then it is a provision of law that there is a presumption of joint ownership. That is, that property is owned jointly. It is also important to note that the matrimonial home is significant to matrimonial property. The land law of Kenya, in particular the Land Act, the substantive law, singles out the matrimonial home and says, look, that this property that is owned and or occupied by parties to a marriage as their family home, with or without children. So when you marry Article 45 to the Land Act and now to the Land Registration Act, and the matrimonial property law, which is the matrimonial property act, then you end up with a scenario whereby property acquired during marriage enjoys protection, just like the marriage as an institution, just like the, the family, the result of the marriage as an institution. In conclusion, 
the legal protection of matrimonial property rights is important. And therefore, for parties to the marriage to be stable, and in addition to that, for the family to be stable, the law is clear, but it is also more important for the parties to understand their legal rights to property acquired within marriage. And on that note, I rest my case. So thank you for listening to me today. It is a subject that is very close to my heart. It is a subject that we, you and I, need to be aware of as, uh, parties, as, as uh, parties in a marriage or as spouses. And it is important to both the law and particularly the Constitution. So thank you for your attention today. It was nice having you as my audience. And bye-bye. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.